Covering news where you live, this is 5 News. Thank you for joining us here today for the latest news and weather where you live. I'm Joe Ellison. One of our top stories out of Springdale where a suspect police say pointed a gun at them and then took off running. Investigators are saying at around six o'clock Wednesday night they received a call about a disturbance at Murphy Park. They say the caller told them the suspect, a 20 year old man, also had a pistol with him. Officers later met up with that man and say they talked to him for a bit. Then he ran away. Police say he ran away near Pleasant Street and Rebecca Lane when he pointed that gun at officers. Now, at that time, investigators say one officer shot at the suspect several times but missed. Then the suspect ran away again, jumping some fences until he was caught in someone's yard. Springdale Police and Washington County are currently looking into what happened here. We do know that the suspect was taken to the hospital and is expected to be okay. The officer currently right now is on paid administrative leave pending this investigation. Now, before we get to other top news where you live, let's get a check of that weather with Zach. Hey, Zach, overnight, a lot of rumbling, some thunderstorms, but it looks like we're clearing up today. Yeah, spring-like storms are out of here, and now winter's back in. Talking about those storms that rumble through, here's all of our storm reports. We had a stronger storm that pushed through northwest Arkansas. There was a narrow, it was a part of a narrow band that cut from northwest Arkansas back down to the southwest. But within that band, there was a couple stronger updrafts, a couple stronger storms, and one pushed across northeast Oklahoma into northwest Arkansas. This thunderstorm really hit Benton County hard and then northern Washington County. We had a lot of small hail reports up to the size of quarters here. Some gusty winds coming in 50, 60 miles per hour and quite the lightning show. There was a lot of lightning all the way back to the southwest where we had a couple hail cores pushed through the I-40 corridor. We had small hail up to the size of quarters here and then our strongest hail reports coming in with this storm that pushed across LaFleur County just a little larger than golf ball size hail. Again, the storms are off towards the east of us for our Thursday, but the colder air is coming in on the backside of that cold front. Northwest wind setting up for your Thursday, 10 to 20 miles per hour sustained with gusts up to 30 miles per hour as we go through the day, setting the stage for the colder air to roll in and a chilly winter day. 30s in northwest Arkansas, upper 30s to low 40s for your afternoon in the River Valley. Factor in that north wind. It'll feel more like the 20s, mid 20s in northwest Arkansas, upper 20s to low 30s off towards the south. Can't rule out a, a first half of the day sprinkle or even a flurry for northwest Arkansas, but outside of that, we're just cloudy, cold, and dry. And then as we go overnight, some scattered clouds will linger. We'll see winds slowly relax through the night, 5 to 15 by early tomorrow morning. We'll drop into the 20s. It'll likely feel like the teens in northwest Arkansas as you start your Friday morning. It'll feel like the lower 20s to maybe a few teens in the River Valley. And then here's something to be excited about. The air mass will take a couple days to warm up, but it does start to warm up right away. Sunshine, winds only 5 to 10 miles per hour, 40s and 50s for our Friday. We'll warm through the weekend and through the first half of next week. By early next week, Joe, more 60s and 70s back into the area. Oh, that sounds good. Thanks so much, Zach. All right, in other news, the defense has arrested in the capital murder trial of Mauricio Torres in Bend County. This is the Bella Vista man's third capital murder trial for the death of his son Isaiah. Back in 2015, the defense began calling witnesses on Wednesday. Closing arguments in the trial will be happening today on Thursday. And Arkansas's governor is asking the federal government for a waiver to start a work requirement program for those receiving Medicaid. In the announcement, the governor says there are roughly 300,000 people in the Medicaid program right now across the state, and the proposal would address workforce challenges. Arkansas was the first state in 2018 to enact work requirements for this program, where nearly 18,000 adults lost coverage then. Now, the following year, a federal judge actually ruled against that requirement. The governor says Arkansas is still too far behind in making sure able-bodied citizens are working. And we've got to get more people off the sidelines and in the game. We need a clearer path for Arkansans to move from government dependency to financial independence. And today's announcement is a major step in that direction. 
Now, the state will post a draft of this Medicaid waiver amendment proposal. It will show what the governor wants to change here in the program. That will be posted on April the 23rd and stay up for 30 days of public comment. Meanwhile, nearly 300,000 people in Oklahoma are at risk of losing their Medicaid coverage if pandemic era protections are phased out. The Oklahoma Health Care Authority says it plans to let those affected know over the next nine months. They say most are losing coverage because they aren't too much to continue qualifying for this program. And voters in Springdale will soon go to the polls to decide several bond issues. Springdale Chief of Staff Colby Falfer says if approved, the new bonds won't add any new sales taxes and the city will refinance its existing debt and they will allow for new projects. Almost $100 million would go towards street improvement projects. Other bond issues will allow for construction of a new senior center, a new fire station and training facilities. The Parks Department could also up upgrade some baseball fields. Falfer says most of the projects will be completed within the next five years. We have been able to go ahead and prepay the architectural work for the senior center. Uh, we've already paid uh, for engineering to be done on, on some of these other projects as well. So we, we will be shovel ready, which will maximize the, the projects that we can do. The longer projects take, the more expensive they tend to get. Now, Falfer says pro projections in this year's budget have been adjusted for some inflation. The date for the special election has been set for May 9th. And Fort Smith Fire Chief Phil Christensen was laid to rest after a long battle with cancer. And to many, he was more than a chief. He was an admirable friend. 5 News reporter Jose Carranza shows us how Chief Christensen's life and legacy lives on. Chief Christensen is being remembered as a man who would do anything for his community. And he practiced that every day by listening to his team, uh, listening to the administration and the board members on the things that they thought uh, were, imper were important for the safety and welfare of our citizens. Called a servant leader, many also chuckled during portions of the service as they fondly thought of Chief Christensen, who was always willing to help others. Even with home improvement projects, speakers even reminisced about how Christensen would joke that they'd be over budget because of all the overtime he spent serving the city. But Phil exemplified what it meant to be a servant leader, and as you heard today what was mentioned by others, that Phil freely gave of himself. He helped others. Chief Christensen died after battling brain cancer for nine months. He joined FSFD 31 years ago and in 2016 became chief of the fire department. And as the bell tolled three times for the fallen chief, his life and legacy will live on throughout the fire department and community. People of Fort Smith and the region should feel good about the fact that a person like Phil served them for a long, long time. So they know what a good fire chief looks like. They know what a good fire chief sounds like. So when we go through that process, we will certainly know what we're looking for. As long as we remember the man, the fire chief, the grandfather, the person who Phil Christensen was and still is in our hearts, he'll never die. In Fort Smith, covering news where you live, Jose Carranza, 5 News. Thank you for joining us here today for some of your top headlines on this Thursday. Make sure to catch up with us again tomorrow right here for more.